Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Bante. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to speak on uh, something that you are uh, not familiar with, but you know them casually, generally. Uh, the sutra I want to discuss today is called uh, Samana Machala Putta Sutta. Samana Machala Putta Sutta. It's a long title. And uh, it simply means the unshakable Sun, summon the monastic that is unshakable, like the simile also is given there. Therefore, it is called Samana Machala. Samana, Samana Achala becomes Samana Machala. Uh, it sounds slightly funny in English, but uh, there is the title. So Buddha said the bhikkhus, there are these four kinds of persons found existing in the world. What for? The ascetic unshakable, red lotus ascetic, white lotus ascetic, and the, and the delicate ascetic among ascetics. Uh, none of them uh, is very clear until we explain them. And Buddha, this is a Buddha present his teaching. First he presented the subject and then he explained it. So this is how Buddha explained these four types of ascetics. Monastic Samana. Uh, in Pali, Samana Machalo, Samana Pundariko, Samana Padumo, Samana Esu, Samana Sukumalo. Uh, neither Pali nor English is very clear until I explain them. The Buddha says, Yeah, be cool. A uh, bhikkhu is a trainee practice in the way who dwells aspiring for the unsurpassed security from bondage. Now he practices unsurpassed security means he practices Dhamma, practice meditation which definitely leads him to attain unsurpassed security. Unsurpassed security means Nibbana. This particular monastic monk or nun that apply even to lay people, uh, you know, uh, but they are not directly mentioned here, but the monastic are mentioned because they are the ones who live very close to the Buddha. And they are practicing meditation between Dhamma and their practice is so certain, so secure and sure that they would not fail in the attainment of liberation. So in the same paragraph, Buddha gives the explanation of uh, the, to give, the, give a simile to explain this uh, statement. Just as the eldest son of a head anointed Khatya king, one due to be anointed but not yet anointed, would have attained the unshaken. Uh, 
security and who has attained the unshaken, that is unshaken state, he will attain. So too because he is a trainee practicing the way who dwells aspiring for the unsurpassed security from bondage. This is the way that person is an ascetic unshakable. That means this ascetic can be stream enterer, once returner, never returner. Ascetics who are in these three stages uh, are definitely attain, will attain liberation one day. They never uh, is there any uncertainty, no uncertainty, definitely they attain. And that is, it is in this way that a person is an ascetic unshakable, unshakable. Anuttara uh, Yogam Patre Manu, the a prince of a royal family, he has to be the eldest son in the family. And uh, he is sure, definite, in uh, uh, what you call anointing or succeeding the father and coronate as a king because he is the eldest son of that king. Similarly, those who train themselves in the Buddha's teaching uh, and attain at least stream entry from that time onward, that person near to somebody parayano. Attainment of enlightenment definite and certain, there is no any doubt about it. That is called Samana Machala. Samano Achala, unshakable monk, unshakable nun, monastic. And that person, then there is another one called, uh, how is a person white lotus ascetic? That is uh, uh, Samana Pundari and Pali. Pundari means lotus. How one becomes a white lotus. Pundari means white lotus. Here, with the destruction of, taste of the taints, a bhikkhu has realized for himself with direct knowledge in this very life the taintless liberation of mind, liberation by wisdom, and having entered upon it, he dwells in it, and yet he does not dwell having contacted with the body, the eight emancipations. It is in this way that person is white lotus. Now, this person, has uh, uh, has attained enlightenment already. Direct uh, uh, realize uh, destruction of things because realize for himself with direct knowledge in this very life the taintless liberation of mind and liberation by wisdom. That means. Cheto Vimutta and Panya Vimutta. This individual has attained both, attained full enlightenment with uh, mind liberation and wisdom. That means he practiced jhanas and uh, practiced vipassana, or he practiced vipassana without practicing jhana. 
that's called the attained enlightenment, that's called Sukha Vipassaka. And, and we must we can translate that into dry inside. He doesn't have the the what you call moisture of jhana. I mean metaphorically speaking, jhana has various uh, possibilities. He has not attained those states, but he is in a he is in uh, fully enlightened, fully enlightened. They are called Sukha Vipassaka. Uh, but he, since he has not attained jhanas, which are, I mentioned last time, last Saturday, called there are four possibilities of attaining jhanas or four benefits. Uh, Dita Dhamma Sukha Vihara, enjoying happiness in this very life, or seeing vision and knowledge, gaining, and practicing Vipassana, and uh, practicing all the four, four, found, four uh, what do you call, jhanas, and attain numerous supernatural powers and so forth. Now, this person, this person has, does not have attained the state or jhanic state to enjoy bliss of human uh, happiness in this life, but he is totally liberated from uh, samsaric suffering by practicing only mindfulness meditation. And he has not uh, touched by the the eight uh, emancipation. What are the eight emancipation? <clears throat> eight emancipation. Atta vimokka. In Pali called Atta vimokka. And that is called he is uh, White Lotus Arahant, White Lotus Arahant, who is, who has practiced mindfulness, attained full enlightenment, but since he has not practiced for jhanas and for, uh, what you call, so, peaceful skills, Santavimokha, Sometimes we call Arupa Jhana, he has not attained them. And therefore he cannot enjoy the, the additional uh, benefits like uh, uh, gaining this uh, eight status of emancipation, Atta Vimokka. Vimokka means liberation. What are they? Number one, having a, one possessing form, seized form, these are, you will listen to it very carefully, these are very subtle uh, state, states of attainment, very subtle. That person has not attained jhanas, uh, the four form jhanas, Rupa jhana and uh, the, the, that is one state, one possessing form, sees form. Inside, inside, he sees his own form, his body, he sees very clearly, even though he, he is in uh, peaceful state, he sees body. And he also sees other forms. That is one state, one of the eight emancipation. Because his form and others' forms he sees as one type of form. And that gives him an opportunity to not to make any distinction between him 
and others, all as one. That is one. Number two, one not recipient of form internally sees form externally. That means he does not see his own form, but sees others' forms. <clears throat> it is not just ordinary people uh, see, don't see their own fault and sees others' own, not like that. It is purely a state of mind, very clear and pure, to see the purest, subtlest form in himself and the same subtlest, purest form in others. That is number two. Number three is called Subhanti Adhimukkoti. This is, his mind becomes so immersed in peace, developed through the practice of metta. Metta, karuna, mudita, upeka, four brahmaviharas. When he practices four brahmaviharas, he attains this state where his mind is very pure and clean of greed, hatred and delusion. Particularly no hatred, jealousy, anxiety, rivalry and all these things does not, not even stain of them is in his mind. Mind is so pure and clean. That's called Subha. Subhangti Adhimuttohoti. He says, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Inwardly he feels that he is emerged with the whole world with metta, loving friendliness, compassion, joy, equanimity. He is filled with this. That is the third state, third emancipation. Fourth emancipation is with the complete surmounting of perception of form, with the passing away of perception of sensory, sensory impingement, with non-attention to perception of diversity, space is infinite, one enters and dwells in the base of infinite of space. What does this mean? It means we say in Pali, Sabbaso Rupa Sanyana Gattangama, Nanatha Kayana Gamanishikara, Patik Sanyana Gattangama, Anantu Akasoti Akasa Nanchen Rupa Sampati Hedi. He attains Akasa Nancha Yatana. That means his perception is completely of the space, infinity of space. Space that is, that doesn't have any object in it, but just the space. It's called Akasana. In part, sometimes you call it Arupa Jana. Number, that is number four. Number five, completing or sum, com, completely surmounted base of infinite or space, uh, perceiving consciousness is infinite. One enters and dwells in the base of infinite of consciousness. Vinyana Chayatana we call Vinyana. That means uh, it can be Chakku Vinyana, Sota Vinyana, Gana Vinyana, Jiva Vinyana, Ka Vinyana, Mano Vinyana. His mind is perceiving only Vinyana perception. Perception. Now he does not have any more the perception of the infinity of sky, infinity of space, but he has the infinity of perception, vinyana. That is the fifth emancipation. That time his mind is 
emancipated, liberated from everything else. Number six, by completing and surmounting the base of individual consciousness, perceiving there is nothing. One enters and there is in the base of nothingness. Here, nothingness means no thing. No thing. It, it doesn't mean emptiness. But uh, it's difficult to explain. But experience, he experiences neither space no consciousness but nothingness in his mind. And that is the sixth. Seventh is uh, by completely surmounting the base of nothingness and enters and dwells in the <coughs> base of neither perception nor non-perception. So it is very difficult to define. It is like uh, it is so refined mental state he is not sure whether there is perception or not. He is not sure. But the mind is very, very clean and clear without any mental object. Number eight is completely surmounted in the base of neither perception nor non-perception. One dwells and enters in, in the cessation of uh, perception and feeling. Perception and feeling. For direct knowledge or lust, these eight, eight things are to be Developed. Now, so for direct knowledge of lust, there is in his mind, there is <coughs> no perception and feeling. Perception and feeling uh, also sees as when. Perception and feeling ceases. There is no lust, no greed, no hatred, and the mind is absorbed in total liberation. So that the second person among these unshakable monastics has attained enlightenment without experiencing this special qualification, qualities, eight emancipation. That is the second uh, unshakable state. Then uh, the third is, Buddha says, how is the person red lotus ascetic? So the first one, the second one is called white lotus society. These, these, these lotuses, they make the distinction between this and that, depending on the number of petals. White lotus society may have less petals, I don't remember the number, less petals than the red lotus. How is a person is a red lotus ascetic? Here, with the destruction of tents, Bhikkhu has realized for himself with the direct knowledge in this very life, the taintless liberation of mind, liberation by wisdom, and having entered upon it, he dwells in it, and he dwells having contracted with the body, the eight emancipation. Now, the difference between this person and the other person, this person is more complete. This person has attained, uh, again, he practiced Samatha and Vipassana, both, 
and he has all this additional embellishment, additional qualification, and uh, uh, he is therefore is called red lotus ascetic. That means white lotus has less petal, red lotus has more petal, and because this person has more qualification and the other one. And the difference between this person and the other one, other one is called dry insight meditator, sukha vipassaka atena, fully enlightened, fully enlightened. But he doesn't have this uh, additional uh, qualifications. And this person, Red Lotus Ascetic, has practiced both tranquility meditation and insight meditation, Samatha Vipassana, and also has this eight kind of emancipation. Now he has three additional things, two additional things. First one has, uh, first, first two has, Inside meditation completed, attain full enlightenment. Second person has practiced inside meditation without these eight liberations. Third person has both tranquility meditation, inside meditation, and has this eight status of emancipation. Just like Red Lotus. And the last person is, is also very important to remember. And how is a person delicate ascetic among ascetics? He's a very delicate, very uh, what do you call soft, gentle, delicate, delicate maybe the better term, delicate person. Here a bhikkhu usually uses robes that, he, that has been specifically offered to him. Seldom one has one that has not been specifically offered to him. Now, this particular ascetic uses a robe that is specifically made for him and specifically do donated to him, saying that, Venerable Sir, this robe is only for you. And he officially made it, offered it, made it keeping that particular monk in mind, and offered to him, and he also used only such robe made only for him. This is a difficult thing to do, but this is one thing. This is the core uh, delicate. And very seldom uh, that he has not been, that he, that he uses that has not been made for him. And secondly, he usually eats arms food that has been especially offered to him. That means they prepare meal and uh, out of large amount of meal, people offered a certain amount to a particular monk or nun. That person eats only that much not anything that is not offered to him. And the thirdly, he usually used lodging that has been specifically offered to him. Seldom one that has not been officially, specifically offered to him. Now that is the lodging, a kuti, house, room, whatever is specifically made for him 
specifically donated to him and designated to him and say when the boy says, we offer this only to you. So he accepts that. Nothing else. Even if it is given to the whole community of monks, he is entitled to get something from among those things that offer to the community of monks. He will not get anything from that communal property only offered to him. And lastly, he usually uses medicine and, provi and uh, uh, provisions for sick that has been specifically offered to him. So somebody prepares medicine even in his presence or previously somewhere and bring it on to him and offer him. This is only for you, for your own benefit, sickness, but we, uh, then this monk would accept it and use it. Nothing from the community, community, communal uh, property, let me say. And <laughs> He does usually behave, behave towards him in agreeable ways by body, speech, and mind, seldom in disagreeable way. So he is a very sensitive, not sensitive, very delicate. And this delicate person is not an ordinary person, fully enlightened, and uh, uh, there is not a single stain of defilement. Uh, discomfort origin from bile. That means he is perfectly healthy. Uh, there is no anything disagreeable in him. Discomfort originating from bile, flame, when their combination, discomfort produced by change of climate, discomfort produced by careless behavior, discomfort produced by assault, or discomfort produced by results of karma, these do not often arise in him. That means he is perfectly healthy, perfectly comfortable, perfectly going ease uh, and does not do anything carelessly. He is perfect in everything that is the, the last of these four unshakable person. He gains at will without trouble or difficulty the four jhanas that continue, constitute the higher mind and are pleasant dwelling in this very life, that we attain four jhanas very easily, comfortably, anytime, any moment he likes to attain it and stay in that state. And with the destruction of taints, he gets realized for himself with the direct knowledge in this very life, the taintless liberation of mind. That means all the eight liberations he attained, he attained liberation of mind, that means attained samatha, liberation by wisdom, vipassana, and having, having entered upon it, he dwells in it. It is in this way that person is delicate, delicate among, among ascetics, among all the monastic. Who is that person, that delicate person? And Buddha says this, if because one could rightly say of anyone, he is delicate ascetic among ascetics, it is precisely of me that one might say this. 
Who is this person? This person is the Buddha himself. He is perfectly healthy. He is comfortable with any situation. His uh, flame, bile, air is not would not disturb him. Uh, or oh, is it? I usually use rope that has been specifically offered to me. Buddha said. Uh, I usually eat arm soup that has been specifically offered to me. I usually use lodging that has been specifically offered to me. I usually use medicine and provisions for the sick that have been specifically offered to me. And those bhikkhus with whom I dwell usually behave towards me in agreeable way by body, speech, and mind. Seldom in disagreeable way. They usually present me what is agreeable, seldom what they disagreeable. Uh, discomfort originating from bile, phlegm, wind, or their combination, discomfort produced by change of climate, discomfort produced by the careless behavior, discomfort produced by assault, or discomfort produced as the result of karma. These do not offer often arise in me, in the Buddha. I am seldom ill. I gain at will without trouble or difficulty the four jhanas that constitute the higher mind and are a present dwelling in this very life. With the destruction of taints, I have realized for myself, with direct knowledge, in this very life, the taintless liberation of mind, liberation by wisdom, and having entered upon ideas in it, uh, if one could rightly say of Anyone, he is the, uh, precisely, it is precisely of me that one might say this. This because are the four kinds of person found existing in the world. That means Buddha explained four kinds of individuals. Many of them have some good, quali wonderful qualities in addition to attainment of total liberation. Buddha has everything. Some has some, not others. But Buddha has everything. Therefore, the Buddha is supreme in every respect of the term. And tomorrow, uh, is we are going to celebrate Vesak. And tomorrow, my in the morning, we do meditation first from 9 to 9.45. And then I give a Vesak talk on the Buddha. On what did he do to become Buddha. I talk about that tomorrow from 9.45 to 10.45. May, in, maybe in the meditation hall and perhaps scene may be a little different, but the contents will be the, the same. So friends, let us do some meditation now. We, we don't have much time to do anything else. Let us meditate now. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. 
Okay. Okay, can you see the screen? Hmm? No. No, Pande. You can see it? No, Pande. All right, let us, uh, uh, let me recite the metta passages and you listen to it. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds, whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth. May all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness. Above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment. Whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or when awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here. Not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision. Removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. Okay, with this metta thought, let us practice meditation.
by means of these meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish. May I join always with the wise until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be from the highest realm of existence to the lowest. May all beings arisen in these realms with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, friends. Now, let me end this session and uh, <laughs> okay. Pero en solo me Okay. Uh, you have peaceful Vesak. Let me, yeah. Happy uh, Vesak tomorrow. Is, uh, we celebrate Vesak. You all are welcome. I'll be there tomorrow, Bande. <laughs> Thank you, Bande. Okay. Now let me end this session because there are people waiting for me. Go for the Buddha Buddha and so forth. Thank you, Bande. Terwan Saranai. Bande. May all those who are in the hospitals recover very soon and return to their normal life, practice Dhamma, continue practicing meditation, and realize the truth and attain liberation from suffering. May all the doctors and nurses and hospital staff who take care of these people with out of compassion, fixing their life, sacrificing their comfort, may they find time to practice Dhamma meditation and attain liberation from suffering. May all those who have lost their loved ones and grieving, may they be free from grief and find time to understand Dhamma, access Dhamma and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all those who are in various troubled spots, war zones, discrimination, poverty stricken, and so forth. May they all be free from suffering and attain liberation from samsara. May all those who are in all directions, north, northeast, east, southeast, south, southwest, west, northwest, up, and down in all these ten directions, all these beings be well, happy, and peaceful, and attain liberation <clears throat> from samsaric suffering. And may all beings be well, happy, and peaceful. So with this, we end this session, and uh, uh, see you tomorrow. Yes, Bande. Yes, Bande. Thank you, Bande. See you tomorrow. tomorrow. We'll see you. See you tomorrow, Bye, 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 Thank you, Bande. Bye, yeah. Bye, everyone.